and we're back with yet another episode of this Unreal Engine 5 FPS tutorial series. For this one, I'm going to take you through the process of adding a procedural crouch animation. I'm calling it an animation, but we're not really going to be animating in this one. Let's just go for it. Now, as you can see right now, when we crouch, there's nothing really happening. So that's basically what we're going to solve in this tutorial. To start, we're going to go to the content drawer and find the ABP character animation blueprint. You can just open that one. This is where we'll do everything that we need to do in this tutorial pretty much, except some setup that we will do in the character blueprint. So let's also open that one. Again, that one's still in core character. This is still a mess, so we need to we really need to clean that up in one of the future tutorials, and we'll probably do that, but for now let's go back to the crouching. What we'll do for crouching is we will just somehow rotate the weapon and make it kind of look like the character is crouching. Now I will show you an example of what I kind of imagine we're going to do, and this is what we generally do. And the way we're going to look at it is I'm just going to find the animation by going to the content drawer, FPS tutorial art, it's going to be assault rifle. And then in here, I'm just going to find the idle pose. And in the idle pose, I'm going to mess around with the skeleton tree just to kind of get an idea of what we're going to do. So what I imagine is if we find the bone that the gun is attached to, that being IK handgun, I imagine the weapon kind of going a little more like this. And then maybe being moved down a little bit. And then back. Naturally, we would still need the hands to be attached. So that is something we need to correct. But... But basically, this is what I imagine. How do we go about doing this? Well, it turns out it's actually not very complicated. We can do it quite easily. I'm going to first reset the pose just to make sure that we don't retain that here. I, I don't think it saves by default, but even then, it is good practice to kind of make sure that it doesn't stay there. Now, let's go to the, to the ABP character. And inside here, I'm going to show you a action or a node. It is called transform modify bone. This node right here is going to allow us to modify the transform of a bone. A pretty original name for it. What does that mean? Well, it means it's basically going to allow us to do exactly what I just did there, but inside of the animation blueprint, wherever we, we so choose. We'll do this when we crouch, but before that, I'm going to just show you how it works. Let me just connect it here. It's going to do a conversion. We can just ignore that. You can connect it back to the end. And in the actual node, I'm going to choose bone to modify. And we're going to choose the IK handgun, just like I did before. Now I'm going to go down here and in translation mode, I'm going to say add to existing. This means that we're going to add a value to the translation or location of that bone. If you press replace, you're just going to replace the entire location and then it's going to be really odd. So don't do that. Just don't do that. Let's click add to existing compile again. Now, if I look at the preview window here, you'll see that we have a little gizmo for transform and I can now move the gun around and this is actually going to apply inside of our game too. So if I compile, go back here and play, you see that we, we do have the whole location applied. We don't want that obviously. Um, but but before we fix that, well, actually, let's fix it. You can just fix it by zeroing it out right here. Or if you hide this, which you can do by just going to pin and then not exposing it, you can also fix it right there. Let's do that same thing for the rotation. So add to existing and then compile. And now let's come up with a crouch pose. So let, let's just say the crouch pose is going to be this. So a little back, a little down, and then rotating it a little to the left. Kind of like that whatever you want to make the crouch pose let's check it in in engine so that's basically our crouch pose now <laughs> it looks pretty weird but let's just let's just go with this uh maybe if, if anything let's move it a little bit forward okay okay so this is going to be our crouch pose now we will need to fix the hands so let's uh let's do that we we obviously aren't doing this when we crouch just yet but before we get to that let's fix the hands not being attached to the correct places. Now, how do we fix this? Well, it turns out because of the way we've animated this, or you've animated this with David, in the animation itself, the IK hand L bone right here, which is just an IK bone, 
is being used as the correct position for the hands all the time. That's in the animation. But then the, the hands themselves, so if we go to the hand themselves, this is also at the correct position. Now, one thing we can do since the IK hand L and R are under the IK hand gun, meaning they will move with this bone if I move it, and they will stay relative to it correctly and, and kind of match wherever the, the hand should actually go. What we can do is we can actually attach or, or kind of IK, if you don't know what IK is, you can just Google or kind of YouTube for it. It's, it's a pretty simple explanation. It basically is uh, called inverse kinematics, and it's a system that allows us to kind of make an arm or some sort of multi-jointed thing or reach for a point in space. The, the core of it here is just basically we can make the hands position reach for wherever we move this new IK hand L thing. And that's basically what we do in Blender, by the way. So all we're going to do is just imitate that in Unreal Engine. Now, that might have been a bit of a convoluted explanation. So I'm just going to show you how to do that. And then I'll, I'll show you kind of the difference. So what we're going to do is going to we're going to go to the end of the anim graph here. I'm going to go right before this component to local because otherwise it's going to make another conversion. And I'm he, right here. I'm going to place a fabric node. Now, fabric, as it says right here, it's a forward and backward reaching inverse kinematics algorithm to a bone chain to solve bone transforms relative to an end effector. Now, that is even more complicated than what I explained, probably. So let's just connect it for now. And what we're going to do inside of this node is we're going to set the effector target right here um, to the IK hand L. As I said, this is what we're going to reach for. We're going to do the left hand first. I'm going to set this to bone space. Then I'm going to set this to copy target rotation. So it copies the rotation itself too. We're setting this in bone space mostly because this is how it works properly. Um, I The first time I did this was a while ago, but just, just copy the settings for now. We're going to set the tip bone itself here is going to be hand L. And the root bone is going to be clavicle L. So this is the entire arm. And then set the precision to 0 0.01. Now, if we look at our left hand right now, you can see that it's obviously not properly attached. It's not correctly attached. But if I compile, you're going to see that it perfectly attaches. And if I zoom into it, we are now perfectly attached. In fact, if I go to the transfer and modify bone and I move this, you can see that our arm is reaching perfectly for the place on the weapon that we want it to be in. This is great. This is exactly what we want it to do. So let's do that for the right hand as well. All you need to do is copy paste this node and then change this to hand R, change this to clavicle R and change this at the top, the effector target to hand IK hand R and compile. So that will give you perfect attachment. By the way, not only does this fix allow us to modify the transform of the bone, but one other thing it does is if there is any little shaking because of how the animations were made. So if I compile without any of this connected, you can see that there is some slight shaking on the fingers and feels like it's not completely attached to the weapon. This perfectly fixes that. I'm going to control Z, compile again. And in fact, I'm going to skip this right here. You can see that there is absolutely no more shaking right now, which is great. That's exactly what we want. So let's use all this now. We've, we've finished completely kind of setting up everything we needed in the uh, in terms of the retargeting or, or sorry, the, the IK of the hands and, and the offsetting. We've kind of set up the crouch pose. We have all of that. Now we need to do this whenever the player crouches instead of doing it all the time. We obviously don't really want this to be applied when we aim and, and all that time. We only want it to be applied kind of as the crouch idle, let's say. So how do we do that? Well, first, we will need, just like the aiming value, we will need some sort of value that allows us to blend between different poses. So let's make a crouching value. I'm going to control D here and call it B crouching value. And with this value, I'm going to go to where we do the idle loop. So right here. And in the idle loop, I'm going to blend between poses. So I'm going to do blend poses by bool and i'm going to blend between the idle loop 
and here's here's the catch we are not going to blend between the idle loop and this thing because this thing is just a location so we would lose all of our animation so instead of that i'm gonna just keep these things connected at the end the fabric nodes the ik can be applied all the time so keep that thing in the end and we're gonna blend between the idle loop and the idle loop with this offset applied which is what we're going to apply when we crouch so we still want to play the animation we just want to play it with some offset in terms of location and rotation Ooh, i did not mean to move that okay so that's basically what we what we wanted to have and then actually we might have to kind of flip these because if we connect the crouching value here now or the other way you can go about it is if you click on this and then in active value click on pin and then crouching value this is going to say whenever we crouch we go to the idle loop and then whenever we don't we're going to go to this pose we don't want that obviously what we want is the other way around so make sure the normal idle loop is in false okay now we have that we are not really setting crouching to anything but if i go to the variable itself and i change its value you can see that everything is working and we are kind of interpolating between the two. But we still need to get this value just like we did with the aiming. So if I go to the event graph, we need to get that value from the character. I believe we already made a value for this. So in fact, we can probably just drag as BP character and go get crouching and assign crouching value to that. Now, if we compile and go to the level, if I crouch, we're going to have that. It's not really synced with the transition of the camera. So sort of the, the character actually crouching. So that's our last thing that we need to do. But other than that, we do get the animation. And if I aim, you can see that it doesn't do anything weird. It actually transitions perfectly. We still playing the idle loop. So that's perfectly correct. Now, let's go to the character for a moment and let's find the crouching. I believe it's somewhere around here. Yes, custom crouch. Uh, we really should comment these. If I double click on the timeline, we can check the time it takes to crouch. So the length is 0 0.3, 0 0.3 seconds from start to finish. So what we can actually do is go to the animation blueprint character, go to the anim graph and just change these blend times to be 0 0.32. So, or not, not 0 0.32, but just <laughs> make both of them 0 0.3 as well. And if you click on it, you can also go to, for example, transition type, not transition type, sorry, go uh, scroll down a little bit and in mode, instead of linear, we can set it to something a little more interesting, like synthesidal in out, for example, and then compile. And that will make it the same length and then also smooth as the actual capsule going down. So if I crouch now, you see that things are synced, which for us is great. This is basically all I wanted to do for this tutorial. We're, we'll do a lot more in coming tutorials, but for now, we've got a little bit of crouching. I believe next tutorial, I'm going to do a little bit of a special extra episode, which we didn't plan to do, and I'm going to add a lowered pose whenever you get close to a wall. That's not going to be very hard, so we might as well do it, and it's going to be very similar to what we did now. So if you're excited to try it out, you could try it out by yourself. But yeah, I will see you in the next one.